So guys, we said the the um, local anesthetic of choice is UP the pain, also called marking. And we did talk about the issue uh, of um, it sometimes coming in as plain or heavy. And we said heavy is the marking that has got dextrose in it that increases its uh, molecular weight. And um, because of that, it tends to settle. Um, it tends to settle. Like I explained that because of the density, the cell surface is going to settle on top of the marking while the marking will settle lower down there. And also it depends on how you position the bed and all of that. So heavy marking compared, compared to plain marking has got less chance. Heavy marking compared to plain marking has got less chances of it going higher and causing the high spinal. So... So, I already speak about the fact that you want something that is hyperbaric. Yeah. So, what is the dose of the paper king? Well, it differs. For C section, the standard dose that we use is is uh, one comma eight mils. We use that two mil syringe. Um, it's important to use that two mil syringe because of the different dosing. We are going to talk about that um, later on. Okay, so we use that one point eight mils, and before can is known. This is for section, but in other procedures they even go up to two point five mils. Now. When you look at marking, you're gonna it's gonna be written point it's gonna be written five percent marking and they'll have something like five milligrams per meal. So let's just um explain let's just explain how do you get there. So you've got five percent five percent um the paper king is like five um grams per hundred mils and that when you convert that is going to be 500 milligrams per hundred mil if you take out the zeros you're going to end up with five milligrams per mil per mil so if you say that we give 1.8 the standard dose for female for pregnant women so if we give them 1.8 how much are we exactly giving them how many milligrams do you remember what we said we said for female um there are different articles no? um some say you can you give 6 to 12 milligrams in c-section some say you give 12 to, to 15 milligrams for other cases. Some say you can even give 10 to 20 milligrams for a C-section. But if we give 1.8 mils, how much are we exactly giving? So you can just say if 5 milligrams is equal to 1 mil, then how much will be 1.8 mils? So if you cross multiply that, you'll get that your unknown number is 9 milligrams. So I actually give them 9 milligrams, all the patients that come in there for a C-section. So, um, so there's another thing that we also give. So you, you take that 2 mil syringe, then the 1.8 there will be with paper cane. And then the 0 0.2 mils will be fentanyl. 
So there is what they call intrathecal opioids. Intrathecal opioids, in this case, you mix your bupivacaine with an opioid in one syringe and then you inject it as you give your spinal. So the drugs of choice there is fentanyl. Fentanyl is the most commonly used one where I'm working right now. When I was a student in Tembisa, they used a lot of sufentan. Sufentanil. Morphine can also be used. But this is the one that we use now. And that's the 0 0.2, um, which is like 10 micrograms of fentanyl. So we always mix those two together. Why do we mix this? The first reason is that um, it helps with intraop. It's, it's just pain actually. Intraop pain management and post of pain management in some cases they say um, you can even decrease your 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 marking if you're giving a lot of um, opioid the nice thing about it post op is that even intra op you might not need to use a lot of analgesics if you have combined the two unlike if you were gonna give marking alone maybe you'd wanna um, you would need to, to, to use other analgesics intra-op but once you give opioids you are less likely to, to, to need uh, other analgesia but there are patients that will need ketamine all those things but it's not very it's not very common but it does happen and also post-op the uh, amount of analgesia that you would use would be a lot compared to um, you would need to use a lot of analgesia if you didn't um, give patient uh, an opioid. So that's post-op now. Post-op now. So it's all about pain management. But these do not come without any problems. Um, they can patients can have respiratory, respiratory depression. They can also have itching. And all of that. Um, I think that's it in terms of the BP that came. Now let's talk about the complications of the spinal. So the the the, the calculation that I've just done. It's very important, you don't need to do it every time you have a patient. We just know that it's 1.8 for all patients, we don't calculate it. Um, but I think there are advanced cases where you might need to actually, with your consultant or your senior, talk to them. For whatever reasons, but as far as I know, it's a standard dose at this point. And then, that calculation is very important. I remember in our final year, they did ask about the calculation. Um, so, what are the complications of the spinal anesthesia? So we can divide them into immediate, not really long term, but let's just say later. Um, not really long, 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 long term. So what would be those? So. The problems that can arise from a spinal anesthesia. The one that many patients do get is hypotension. Very few patients do not get hypotension with a spinal. Very few of them. Many of them they do get it. So it's just gonna come. It's just gonna come. And how do we define hypotension? It's when your systolic. BP is less than 100 or when there's a reduction there is a 20% reduction of your baseline right so 
with hypotension. And we know why we get the hypotension is because um, we get that sympathetic foot block which causes vasodilation. What happens with vasodilation? We get a, a decreased <coughs> venous return. And that causes a decreased mechanical output. Another thing that we get is that reflex um, tachycardia. Reflex tachycardia. So, first one is hypotension. Because I need space. The other one can be uh, bleeding. That's when I start bleeding from the site where you punctured. The spinal can also fail. spinal, hypotension, bleeding, failed spinal, high spinal, um, what else can we have there? On the other side, we can have things like um, infection, let me just put post dural puncture headache things like remember we did speak about this the way the way that you can avoid it we, we are going to talk about it as a complication on, on its own but one of the ways of um, reducing the risk of getting a post dural puncture headache is using a pencil point uh, needle yeah so here's infection meningitis as if that needle or the technique is not aseptic. Once you push in that needle, you are already in the brain, basically. So you can give a patient meningitis. Um, you can also, the patient can also develop a friend of mine um, who told me about a patient that was done as an, 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 an LP and then developed an epidural hematoma and then got paralyzed later on so it's very important it's a very um, it's very possible for that to happen so you can get um, systemic, systemic toxicity, and we know that bupivacaine loves the CVS, while lignocaine loves the CNS. Um, you can also get what they call a new lignocephalus. Yeah, lignocephalus. So this is when air enters the, the space and then gets into the brain and all of that. So it's important to remove air there, just as you would when you're, in, when you're injecting a patient. You can also get respiratory depression, not from the local anesthetic, but from the opioids that we have given as an adjunct, right? Um, I think that's it. I 
think that it is. I'm sure there are other things as well. Um, that I can think of at this moment. But the ones that we're going to spend time on is high spinal. And also, we need to know if we've got a failed spinal, what are we going to do? And definitely hypotension, intra op. So, these are the complications that we're going to be talking about. They like asking these complications. So, we're going to talk about that in, in uh, another video. But very briefly, Thank you.